Sean's daughter. I teach middle school and high school at Painesville Independent Schools. Uh, I teach two ecology classes in which this project is, is related to and some of the biology students as well that are sophomores. The senior ecology class started this year, the Trout in the Classroom project at Painesville High School. Let me first tell you a little bit about the technology component of the project. We have purchased with our monies from the grants a chiller, which is a unit that actually chills the water to a certain known temperature, and you can set the temperature whatever you need. For trout, for raising rainbow trout, that temperature needs to be right about 52 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's opposite of what you might have done if you've had a warm water tank uh, with, a, let's say, a tropical aquarium of some sort. The unit was like $947 uh, on sale, so we had to quickly find partners to go with us to, in order to do this, and we were fortunate to do that. Uh, we, we also have purchased some uh, meters. Uh, we have conductivity meters, and we have pH meters and temperature probes as well. So the kids were uh, able to use these different types of meters instead of measuring, for example, pH with pH wide, uh, wide range hydron paper, they could use that. We started out with using paper, litmus, and then we also used some of the, the liquid chemical indicators for pH, and then we graduated the students up to where they could use the meters and the proper care for the meters. But basically what this project is about, and one of the reasons why I decided to do this project is because it was different and it allowed us to use a 120 gallon tank within the classroom that we already had and didn't have to purchase. Um, I always had a trouble when I was teaching uh, biology through the past years on the nitrogen cycle. You know, you had no trouble usually, and most of you teachers know this with the, the water cycle and, and, and then the carbon cycle. But when you get to the nitrogen and phosphorus cycle, it's a little bit more difficult to get kids to hang on to that, those ideas and the cycling of, of those nutrients. So. There is the nitrogen cycle that, that occurs within different environments. So the freshwater ecosystem is a good example of where you can study the nitrogen cycle. So we obtained some uh, what's called eyed eggs from Wolf Creek Fisheries or Wolf Creek National uh, Fish Hatchery in Lake Cumberland, Kentucky. They're the only cold water fishery or hatchery in the state of Kentucky and they basically produce all the rainbow trout that's stocked in all the waters in Kentucky. So we had to make a trip to, to first get those eggs and bring them back. The eggs are placed into a, a nesting basket and allowed time to hatch, which is about 14 days from the time you get them. And uh, then those eggs hatch and you release them and allow them to float to the bottom of your tank, at which time they live off the yolk sacs that they have for about another 14 days. And then they swim up to the top and they're called swim up fry at that point and you start to feed them and there's different size food that you, that you feed them. They would not let me know the ingredients in the, the food that they provided because I was going to try to purchase some of this food on my own. And they said, if you need more, we'll just send it to you. I have uh, various, uh, you know, hypotheses of what the food might be, but it's, it was pretty fun. You have different size food for when the fish reach different ages. But you've got to really keep a, ha a handle on the water quality. And students were introduced to freshwater ecosystems and water quality. We looked at the chemical analysis of water and what, what constitutes good water versus not so good water. So the students were able to test for pH, of course, first, dissolve the oxygen, temperature. And then they we, we worked them up to where they could test the nitrite levels and the nitrate levels as well as the ammonia levels. So the students had uh, hands-on opportunities to test these water quality uh, parameters within our tank. The students then uh, looked and studied the idea of what could we do or what are we doing as humans that you know we contribute to an imbalance within our own freshwater ecosystems. And I had students report on different uh, water contaminants, uh, different uh, issues pertaining to water quality. We, in, we then had guest speakers come in from the Vision of Water. We had guest speakers come in from Water Watch, and we had guest speakers come in that were fish and wildlife uh, fisheries biologists. So the students were also exposed to different career paths. As far as the testing, uh, we, we graduated the students up to using Lamont kits. If you have ever worked with any of the Lamont kits, they, uh, the chemicals that we had in our old kits need refurbished, so we used some money to refurbish and get new chemicals so we could titrate with our Lamont kits and measure dissolved oxygen. The different filters and the, the pumps and, and so on are pretty much standard, but the chiller was the big unit, the costly item, and, and this project, along with the probes and the various meters. Once the fish were grown to, to about a two to three inch size fingerling, we contacted Division of Fish and Wildlife, and they have 
already prescribed where they would like for you to release the fish. So we had our first release was approximately uh, right at March 8th or 10th. We about two weeks later had another fish release in the same area. So all the students got to travel to the Paintsville Lake and this area that's there that we released was called the Little Paint Creek Wildlife Management Area. It's a very scenic, very scenic area at the backwaters of Paintsville Lake and we released over 200 trout. We had one occasion near, near the very last two weeks that we had these fish. We had a spike in the ammonia levels and it was a long weekend. We had a, a spring break and we had, we had, I had a lot of friends that were uh, custodians and they got to like our fish real well and I kind of hypothesized that maybe we just started feeding them a little bit too much. They grew, once the fish grow to that size and you've got two, maybe 250, 300 in the tank, then space becomes a limiting, a limiting uh, you know, factor. So the students learned about space. Hey, you know, why do we have this problem now? Well, we didn't have the problem two months ago. Well, you know, these fish are larger now. They're producing more waste products. If you overfeed the fish, then you're going to contribute to the decaying matter uh, and, and build up the ammonia levels. The ammonia levels are most essential when you're working with this, this project and doing water changes. Uh, we did water changes, but we didn't realize the importance of doing them more frequently than what we did. So there were several factors that might have led to somewhat of a fish kill. We were very fortunate though, because we ended up getting about a 64, 65% uh, release uh, and survival rate. So we were very fortunate there. The, the children were able to go back to the uh, Wolf Creek Fisheries. We had a, a partner that wanted to see the students make the trip there, so we took a field trip back there. The students were able to see the entire facility. It's very impressive. Uh, Wolf Creek Fisheries uh, has about 12,000 gallons of water that comes from about 100 feet deep and under the dam at a flow rate of about 12,000 gallons per minute. It goes in one direction and out the other. It's not recycled, so they were very, very fortunate to get to see firsthand you know, the people that work there in that hatchery. So we kept on exposing our students not only to testing procedures and the technology involved in monitoring, you know, the growth of these fish, but they also got to, you know, firsthand see people working and maybe for some of the students, give them just a possibility, some ideas what they might want to do as far as a career path. We finally had some students uh, crunch the data and put, uh, put all the findings together on some graphs with uh, one of our uh, websites that we used to, to enter the data to get the graphs. Uh, and it was just, for me, it was just a very, very uh, learning experience because, you know, as a teacher, you, you, you work with something like this and you really don't realize how much work goes into it and how much more that you can do to improve it. So uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is the rainbow trout was our guinea pig because next year we're going back for the uh, brown trout. Uh, let me give you a word of advice. You do have to have a permit <laughs> to get the eggs. And I actually wrote the grant and got the funding before I got the permit. And then you do have to have a permit to release the eggs, okay? So um, that's something I learned, and uh, we had, I can say it now, but I don't guess they can do too much, illegally released one set of trout and illegally re uh, released another set of trout, but I don't think there was any harm because the permit was in the mail. We just wanted to release the, the fish. But with the kids had a great time with this, and um, there's just so much you can learn. The nitrogen cycle, this is excellent for teaching the nitrogen cycle. It's excellent for getting kids to understand the, the meaning of pH and to using probes uh, and the science department. We don't have a lot of probes, so being able to get the, the monies to buy a good pH meter, a good conductivity meter, and letting the students use these meters and do the various water quality tests was really enhancing our, our, our program. The life cycle is something that we might add to next year and actually do maybe a growth chart. We did a small growth chart, but I think I would like to compare the growth of the rainbow trout to the brown trout. And, and eventually, hopefully, we'd like to get the, uh, the brook trout, which are a little harder to get those eggs. They're kind of stingy with those because really the brook trout is the closest thing to the most native trout that we have in Kentucky.